well, once again, the prayers that have been prayed, the worship that's been brought has sort of paved the way nicely for the word that I feel God has put on my heart today. It's always interesting how God sort of weaves his message through the weeks and the months as the year unfolds. And I want to just reflect on a few things Catherine brought to us last week. And I really like the fact that she underlined the importance of simply meeting together, gathering together. You know, yes, like she said, it is technically possible to be a Christian and not gather together. But in reality, it isn't. We need this. We're called to be together. God calls us to fellowship with each other and he calls us to unity and to be connected with each other because we are family. We're the parts of the body and if there's any part missing or if any part's not working correctly with the other part, in some way, big or small, we will suffer. So we need each other. And I just wanted to say, you know, that the beautiful thing you get what you might not on your own in the same way is, is you get a real place where there's so many hearts gathered together, people full of the Holy Spirit, that there's a place of healing. It's a safe place that is created when there are so many people who are just coming to worship God. And, you know, I just wanted to sort of say, you know, you can come into this place and if there's something that's kind of getting you, something that you're hung up about, if there's some kind of wound, some healing of whatever it is you need, this is a safe place and you can receive that. You could be healed right in your chair, but we're meant to be community and family, so seek someone out. Pray with someone. Don't leave the building the same as you came in, you know? And I just wanted to underline that, and particularly sometimes things can come from the front. You know, those of us who stand up often have to bring tough words, but that's because our Father God cares. And I talked about some difficult things last time. You know, I talked about things like homosexuality, talked about abortion. You know, these are difficult subjects, but we can't hide away from the challenges we face. But I just wanted to say that when things come up, If you're affected, if it touches you in any way, come and get prayer. Pray with one of us. And some things aren't just sorted with one prayer on a Sunday morning. Sometimes you need one or two people to walk a journey with you, you know. And that's what you get from family and fellowship. I just want to underline that really before I kind of launch in with with what I've got today, because... A message that God keeps laying on my heart and I can't get away from, I have talked about it last time, which is the truth. You know, this book here is the truth. This is God's word communicated to us through ordinary men and women, but just people who laid themselves before God, heard his voice and put it down on paper for us. And we have the benefit of having it all. You read the Old Testament, the blokes and the women in there haven't got it. You know, the people who were walking on the spot with Jesus, it's easy to point and say, oh, they made that mistake. It's say, would you have done any better? Seriously? They didn't have this. An Old Testament people, they didn't have the Holy Spirit living within them. But look at what they achieved. How much more can we achieve by simply believing this, knowing this truth? And I do truly believe that our biggest challenge in this nation is this is being attacked. And God is looking for men and women who will stand firmly upon this. This is your foundation. This is your foundation. Don't mess with it. Anyone remember Woolworths? I used to... See, look at your pick up there. I used to love the pick and mix. It seemed when I was a kid like a wall of trays full of sweets. But you know the beautiful thing about that was, it wasn't like a bag that you opened up, oh, and there's stuff you don't like, there's stuff you do. You chose exactly what you want. I'd love it if we could do it with this sometimes, to be quite frank, because there's challenging stuff in here. There's bits in here that sometimes you think, oh, I wish that weren't there. But you can't take bits out. You can't mess around with it. You can't leave the bits out that you don't like. 
you can't add the bits in that you do like. You take it all or nothing, really. That's God's word to us. It isn't the pick and mix. So I just really wanted to say that because I'm going to build upon truth is going to be in my message today. But the title of what I've got to bring today is building a history with God. And I want to talk about building a history with God. But the way in which we do that, I'm putting an emphasis on building a history with God based upon knowing and experiencing the truth. So it's how to take this, the everyday word of God, and put it into your life so that these words become a living reality. Because that's what we need. The Holy Spirit is here to help us bring these words to life. Because if we don't have the Holy Spirit bringing this to life, we might find it's very dry, it's very unrewarding, it's just a religious formula if we don't have life to go with these words. So building a history with God based upon knowing and experiencing the truth. One scripture, and it's found in 2 Timothy 3.16. It's going to come up on the screen, hopefully. Um, I'm in the New King James Version. It's a version that I'm reading at the moment. And I wanted to just simply, uh, simply read it to you. 16 and 17. And I will explain a bit more context to it after I have read it. Do we have anything on the screen? We don't, do we? I'm going to read it anyway. So 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. There we go. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Interesting word at the start, all. And you know, you look it up in the Greek, it means all. <laughs> You'd have that one for free. I put a lot into that, yeah, thank you, thank you, my brother. It's there, it's all. All scripture is God breathed. It's what another version says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Think about that. Every bit. It's there for us. But what that means is if we encounter a bit we challenge, that challenges us, that we, we can't quite handle maybe, you need a kind of facility with God to be able to say, do you know what? I'll believe that and I'll trust you that that's your word even if I don't understand it yet, even if I'm struggling with it. You know, you're not ignoring it, you're kind of just sort of putting it on the back burner perhaps. And I'm sure you know what I mean. But it's not letting the things you don't understand trip you up. It's embracing them and saying, Do you know, you have a strength when you can simply say to someone maybe, I don't have a simple answer for your question. But let me just share a bit about God with you. Something like that. I wanted to pick up on that scripture to start with because that was one of the key earliest things for me. And I've shared before about um, a Billy Graham documentary that I watched. It's like a two hour documentary called um, Billy Graham, God's Ambassador. And Billy Graham was a man who traveled the entire world just evangelizing, teaching, preaching. One of the most amazing people to, to just for God to use to travel and share his word amazing guy but it's just one thing that Billy did when he was a young man he'd just come to the Lord and he talks about going down into the sort of forest one night he'd had a really challenging time a close friend of his was kind of wobbling in his faith he was asking Billy questions that Billy just couldn't answer he knew he knew this was truth but he couldn't answer all of the questions and we can't sometimes and he took this book and he says he went, he was walking in the woods and there was like a tree stump. And he says, I put the book, my Bible, on a tree stump and I just said, Lord, I don't understand this book. He says, I can't win a debate on it. I can't explain it in and out in a lecture or any kind, you know, but I choose to believe by faith that it is your word. 
And I think that profoundly marked that man for what God was calling him to do. But this isn't just for people who are going to travel all over the world. This is for everyone, every believer. And I just feel today God, God's saying, if you haven't done that with his word, just get in your space with God, you know, with your Bible in hand and verbally speak something like those words out. Say something like, I believe, Lord, that this is your word by faith. And I say that because as we build our history with God, we can't do it if something's going to come up that's going to trip us up. If we get to something and every time it's a bit difficult, we're going to, well, I'm not doing that. I'm ignoring that. We can't do that. It will harm the history that God wants to build with you because he's a relational God. He's not someone who just visits every now and then. He wants a daily walk with you. And the only way I believe really we will be able to stand on some of the solid truths when they are challenged as they are being doing is if we can look back and say, yes, I've got a solid history with God. I can see time and time and time again that his word, his truth, who he is, his character, his nature, his promises, all of that is always true. He never lets you down. I, I can stand here now, Christian of about 15 or so years, and I can say he's never let me down. And I know that I could stand here in five, 10, 50, whatever more years, and I will say he's never let me down. And I know that because it's true. His character is to be with you and to not let you down. But we need to know that that's true. And we need to make a determined decision to say, this word I will believe is true, regardless of my understanding, regardless of circumstances. Look at our brother Wynn. I can't explain that. I can't explain it. But I won't stop praying for him. And I know God is fundamentally good. His heart is good and kind. We all experience these things and we, we can't always explain them. But it's the truth. And if we stand upon it, we won't go wrong. But being in fellowship with each other helps us to build that history with God. Because we encourage each other, we can kind of pull each other aside, point something out if it needs sorting. We can encourage each other by our own walk. Sometimes someone could look at you, you look at someone else and go, oh wow, look at that. And it encourages you to want to go deeper with God, perhaps. We need each other. You know, God is in the business of restoration. You know? There's, um, <laughs> there's the next scripture I'm going to um, bring up here. It's from Joel. Joel 2, 25. And this was possibly the earliest scripture that God gave me as, a, as what's called a rema word, the word of God spoken directly to you in a situation. And it simply says, God says, I will restore to you the years the locust has eaten. I will restore to you the years the locust has eaten. Years. This is no small time thing here. This is years that can be restored. If anyone knows anything about locusts, they decimate an area crop. You can have a beautiful crop and within hours, you know, day, it can be wiped out, completely gone. But God is saying here, I can restore even years that have been completely destroyed. And that was one of the earliest things he spoke to me because my past of coming to the Lord was that I was, I mean, I was into drugs. I was a drug addict. I was just in a wild, crazy life. I was getting into all kinds of stuff. I, I was a very angry, bitter guy. I was so emotionally wounded and damaged. And if you leave wounds, they just, they just fester. And the same with emotional wounds, you know, that's why I say, get stuff checked, get some prayer into it, start to open the door of healing. But I'd locked it all down thinking I could ignore it and it doesn't work. So I came to the Lord in like just brokenness, just dark place in myself. That was my journey to the Lord. 
Someone might come in the complete opposite way. They're on paper, everything might be rosy and sunny, but there'll still be a gap that only God can fill. But that was my journey. So I then suddenly became aware of all these years that I'd wasted, really. All these years when I'd just been so horrid to people. I just, I just went out to rip people down because I was miserable. And if you're hurting and miserable, you can have a tendency to hurt others and want to ruin others because you don't want anyone else being happy because that just makes you more offended and miserable. That's how I was. That's how I was. That's what I did. I used my words to cut people down. It's interesting now, God's using me to do the opposite. Because <laughs> if there's one word I'd encourage to anyone, it's that you're, you're great. And God sees you as incredible. And every little part of the body is needed. And God wants the history with you. Build the history with him and with each other. So that was the word to me. I'll restore the years. But he also said to me, all those years that were, quote, wasted, I will use that to witness to others. And over the years, it's amazing how God has used my testimony to encourage others, to speak to others. Because there's nothing quite like a former drug addict to speak to another and say there's a way out. Someone could say that, and it's true, but if they've not gone through that, it doesn't have the same punch to it. What people really need is to someone to stand there living in a victory that they need. And we've all got our story, whatever it is, there's always someone you can witness to. And you'd be surprised what eyes are on you when you're out and about in your everyday life. Believe you me. So just know that you're significant. And if you think you've got something that's going on that's holding you back, God is in the business of restoration. There's no hopeless situations with God. There's no job that's too big for him. There's no situation or mess that's too big or too dirty that he can't clean up or sort out. There simply is no such thing as a lost cause with God. But you need to walk with him daily. You need to let him heal and restore you. Let him build that relational history with you. Let that be a testament to others. Even if you couldn't quote one single scripture, let them just see you living out. You might come to the Lord. I, I didn't have a clue any scripture. I could have barely quoted any scripture to people 15 years ago. But I can say, well, I used to be a drug addict and overnight I'm not. That's how it was. People see you different. You look different. What's that on your face? That, what's that? Oh, it's a smile. You know? <laughs> I didn't have anything to smile about. Do you know what I mean? It's just simple things. People can go, what is, what is with you? Why are you happy? What's that about? And it will offend some people, so you can have a bit of fun with that sometimes, you know, because it messes people up if you're, if you're a bit happy. And so, you know, just have a bit of fun with it. Tony's nodding. He knows it, doesn't he? Yeah, he knows it. <laughs> yeah. So just to encourage you, God restored his entire nation of Israel you don't often hear about an entire nation ceasing to exist as a nation and then being restored. No, no job is too big for God. I just want to say that to you. Fast forwarding on a little bit in my history building with God. I was really stirred by, um, you know, the Apostle Paul in, uh, in, in Corinthians. I'm just going uh, to read one, one bit to you. Um, in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, 23, I'm just going to read a couple of uh, verses to you. The Apostle Paul says, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Other versions say all things are permissible, but not everything is beneficial. You know, we can do whatever we choose we have free will god for some reason gave us that i know why kind of really but it's too big to go into but he lets us have the wild dangerous free pass of free will but we have his word of truth and we have his spirit of truth and we can line our lives up to know the right way to go so that we want to choose 
what he wants for us. And as we build that daily relationship with him, as we build our history, you find that you start to want to do the things he wants you to do. And other things that even maybe that you wanted to do six months or a year ago, they don't hold an appeal to you in the same way because you're growing in your history. You're spending time in his presence. You're letting the word of God shape you. That's what it's supposed to do. The word of God needs to shape us and it needs to shape society around us. It's kind of people are trying to turn it the other way around and saying, oh, we need to reevaluate the word. We need to make it say what we want so we can live this way, that way, do this, do that. And it's like, no, no, God hasn't changed. It wasn't an oversight on God's part, the 21st century. God knew, no, no, this is, this is then, this is now, and this will be. He doesn't change. That's the one yardstick plumb line standard. That's him. And we need to always line up with him. He has a perfect will, a, a tailor-made, unique path for you to walk. No one else can walk your walk. No one else can walk mine. No one else can walk every single one of yours. We encourage each other, we inspire each other. It's not wrong to look at someone and think, oh, I, I like the kind of stuff they're doing, but you are not them, yeah? Just like I am not you. And that's a good thing. We encourage each other, but the bottom line is, every single one of us needs our own intimate relationship with God. Because at the bottom, of the, the bottom line is that it's down to you and God. Yes, we're family, we're with each other, but every single person needs to be on their correct path. Every part of the body needs to be in the right place, functioning correctly at all times. That's the aim. <laughs> that is the aim. Well, sadly, sadly, in little quotation marks, praying a prayer of, oh God, I want to walk your perfect will, God thought I shall take you into some youth work and children's work then. And oh, that's going to be at a Methodist church as well. So you'll have to leave your church that you like being, that you have no desire to leave. Go and do this job, which you have no desire to do, no qualifications to do. But that was his plan. Now, I could have kind of got offended or disappointed in that situation. And oh, I don't want to do that. And that was true. And I was honest with God. I was like, God, I, I kind of really don't want to do that. That's not what I'm looking to do with my life. But then, have you given your life to Jesus or not? Do you want to walk his path or not? You can say no. I had free will to say no, but I knew he was saying, this is the path I've got for you. And you know, those three years I did there changed me in, in ways that have been so valuable now. And ways in which I, I, you know, I'm perhaps even not fully aware of all of them. When it came to leaving that job, I knew he was calling me on. That was a part-time job and I still had my part-time hours at Tesco. Some of you will be well familiar with my decade of Tesco. <laughs> Tony laughing again. <laughs> um, and that was a real sort of journey of obedience. And I could have stepped out of that at any time. And I didn't want to be there for many years, but I knew God was saying, I've got work for you to do here. It's more than just a supermarket job. Our lives are more than just whatever the circumstances appear to be on the surface, always. And you might not see fruit in the, in the short term, but you can be laying seeds down in a place. You can be witnessing to people, just even telling someone God loves them, someone actually cares about them. That might be some at 10, 20 years down the line that that person needs. Trust in God's word and the restorer. Anyone can be restored, so hope in people's lives. We need hope more than ever. People are out there panicking and going to pieces. Be a strong foundation. Be a pillar of support for people, irrespective of what they believe. Don't, don't make them become a Christian first. You can't do that. Just draw alongside them like Jesus, a good friend, a loving father, a brother, a sister. Just love them, encourage them. Share a word of encouragement. So Tesco, <clears throat> I was leaving the youth work. So my history with God had come to this point. And you know, I thought, well, okay, I'm only going to have part-time work. How's that gonna work? 
you know, I thought half my income's going to disappear. But, you know, when you've read your Bible, you'll see that God's capable of feeding his people in a wilderness for 40 years on a daily basis. And he chooses to do it daily because he's relational. He wants that history built day by day by day. He doesn't just dump a load of manna and quails and say, oh, I'll see you in a year, guys. He could have done. But he's like, no, no, I'm going to deliberately make sure that rots the next day so that you've got it. Eat it today and then you've got to seek me out and remember me the next day, the next day, the next day. He does it deliberately for that. He wants to know you, which is quite incredible sometimes because sometimes you just want to lock yourself away and go, oh, I don't want to know anyone. God still wants to know you all the time. It's remarkable. Build your history. Because I knew that it would always be okay. As long as the shepherd, the good shepherd, is leading you, you shall not want. Psalm 23, very basic but profound. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If he is leading you, you are on the path behind him, following him, the way he's going for you, you'll have all the provision you need, the protection you need, the equipping you need, whatever that looks like, however that translates into reality in your life, he will always be there. Everyone he calls throughout scripture, he says things like, I'll be with you, I'll go before you, I'll prepare a way, I'll protect you from this, I'll put favourable boundaries around you. It's just in the book, over and over and over again, his nature, his character, his goodness, Work that into your history with God on a daily basis and remember it. Remember it. Because then when you come up against the big decisions like this and it's like, wow, like half my income's disappearing. You know, that's, that's a serious thing. But I thought, well, God, I know that I'm right with you. I'm walking with you and I know that you'll take care of me somehow. And as it turned out, he did. I ended up out of the blue getting a, a few months worth of income as I left the job, which I wasn't expecting at all. So that was a little cushion. And instantly, loads of overtime opened at Tesco. They hadn't been overtime for like over a year. None at all. And all of a sudden, just when I need it, tons opens up. So God took care of the problem. But before I knew all of that, I have a decision. Am I going to trust him and step out? Doesn't mean I still wasn't a bit... You know, you're not always like, yes, I have total faith. It's like, you know, it's like, no, I'm still, you can still be a bit wobbly, but that's what courage is, walking with courage before the Lord. It's having maybe a fear and a bit of a wobble, but stepping out anyway, taking the next step with God. That's what it's about. And then the glorious day when it finally came to leave Tesco. <laughs> hmm. Savor that moment. 2016, middle of that year, God finally had spoken to me and said, you can go now. I've kind of done what I want with you there. So I thought, oh, first time I'd ever heard him actually say, I I'm done with the work I've got for you now. So I thought, oh, what's that going to look like? How's this going to pan out? I got my job at Christian TV. I had that on the go. But I'm like, OK. Well, that's only part-time, so I've essentially got the same situation. I would only have part-time if I left. What's going to happen? But I'm scrambling ideas of how to get out of this place. <laughs> um, yeah, and you'll understand. <laughs> um, but, you know, my history with God had been like, OK, well, if you're saying that to me, God, you've got some way prepared for this. You've got some provision prepared for this. And so I felt right towards the end of the year, God actually spoke to me. And the word he gave me with Tesco was burn your bridges, completely leave. There was a little safe option where you could have taken a sort of a career break where you could go back to your job if stuff didn't work out. That wasn't right for me. Could have been right for someone else. But for me, my history with him, my walk, it was don't do that. For one person, it's stay. For the other, it's go. Both are correct as long as you hear the word for you. That's the thing. Could be the same situation, but God says different to one, different to another. And he spoke to me through 
Elijah and Elisha. And again, because I have read this book, I knew about such men as Elijah and Elisha. And the story is great. You know, Elisha was essentially like the apprentice, you know, the student of Elijah. Elijah, the prophet, man of God, you know, Christian celebrity of the day, really. You know, like a lot of people knew about this guy, did amazing things. If, you, if you, you've not read about it, read about it. And he had Elisha learning from this man. We need people to learn from, good, strong people we can learn from and we can observe. And they came to a point when he really had a choice to essentially leave everything he knew, his entire livelihood. And we read about Elisha making a decision where he essentially he takes his, his plough and his oxen, which is his entire livelihood, that's what he did. And he just smashes his plough up, gets rid of the oxen, does a big barbecue for everyone. He burnt his bridges, literally. That was right for him to do. That could have been reckless if God hadn't said to do that. But he knew, he sensed something. I don't think if you'd have asked him at that moment what was in store to explain what's in store for you, everything, he'd probably be like, I don't really know, but I know I'm meant to follow that guy. I know I'm meant to be around him. I know I'm meant to leave this livelihood that I knew that was fine for a time. So that was where I was. And I knew when God was speaking to me about that, he was saying, this is what I now want for you. Burn your bridges, do what Elisha did, and step out and trust. He said, and I felt him say, I've got new things for you that you won't experience if you stay at Tesco now. You'll still be blessed, but I've got new things for you. Now, I couldn't tell you what those were. Going into 2017, I couldn't tell you what those would be. But standing here now, I can reflect back on my history that's unfolded with God over the last 12 months plus. Because stepping out, going more full-time at Christian TV has just blessed me remarkably. The stuff I've learned from David and Jan, as solid, integral people of God, David as, a, as an entrepreneur, that really feeds something in me. We're now at a point where we're starting an exciting business venture together, as well as Christian TV. Couldn't have envisaged that. Couldn't have envisaged the ways I've grown, how I've matured. God's allowed me to become a homeowner. That's a miracle. <coughs> I had nothing. All those years the locusts had eaten away, all that money I'd blown on drugs meant I wasn't saving for a house. You know, you got a job that you earn just a modest income, nothing that a bank's going to go, oh yes, come in and sit down, we'll lend you tens of thousands. They sort of look and go, oh, where's the rest? Where's the rest with these numbers? I had no, no real deposit, very little, limping into the ring with it. But God provided. Money came in from a family member, my grandparents, out of nowhere. So it's like, oh, I've got a bit of a deposit going on now. And somehow there was the little gem there. I always sensed God would say, I'll give you a house. But we need to just follow him and trust him. Focus on building his kingdom, his house, doing his work. And then at the right time, everything will be added to you. The, not just the things you need, but also the things you want. Because God is a rewarder of those who seek him and follow him diligently. He rewards faith. And he's simply just a good father. He wants to bless his children. He has good things for you. And that comes through building that history. So to conclude, there's a number of steps that I would say we can put in place quite tangibly. Number one to building your history is, you know, you can start small. Start small with little things, you know. Just, just pray for a parking space or something. Pray that you'll get a few reductions when you do your shopping. If money's tight, that's a blessing. And you'll see, oh, look what God did there. Pray for little things. Start small. Build that history up. You don't start the massive stuff. 
You see God at work and his trustworthiness, his faithfulness, his character in the small stuff. So then the next thing, you can then get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah? That's how it works with building that history with him. Second one is read your word. Read your word, know your word. Don't worry if you don't remember it immediately. Just get it in there. Be like food. Put it in. Let it get into yourself. Let the Holy Spirit have something to work with. Let him show you the truths about yourself. Because you'll know it. When you need it for a situation, you'll have read about this man, that woman, this situation, that scripture. It can speak to you. If you've not read it and you don't know it, you may struggle. Gather together. Point number three, gather together. But also let God show you a bit like an inner circle, a closer group, like Jesus. He had his 12 guys, he had his inner circle, and then even within that, he had the three. Yeah? Build that. Have people who can give you good counsel and good advice. The kind of people you could call up at X hour in the morning, and they'd be there to welcome you in, to sit and pray with you, to minister to you, just to show you someone cares. Develop that. Number four, I would say maybe jot things down. Keep a little diary of some kind, just so, just so that you remember things you went through and what God did and the result of that. Might help you in building that history because we can easily forget things. And when, when a, a trauma hits, when chaos hits, it's easy to get a bit wobbly and forget all of what he's done. If you had something, you could just maybe open a little book and not just his word, but what you have written about what he did. That might just stabilise you, remind you. Number five, I would say share testimony. Just share testimony with others. Share good things he's done. Because when you share good stuff, it encourages others. And actually, God, when he sees you sharing his goodness, he'll pour more goodness on you because then you'll have more testimony to reach more people and encourage more people. It's like the talents. He gave more to the one who had the most. <laughs> you would, that would sound unfair, but it's not when you understand how God wants to bless people and reach people. Number six, one of the most important, praise him. Thank him, praise him. If you can't do anything else, the one thing you can do is thank him, praise him. Just thank him for who he is. Thank him that you know him. Thank him, just thank him. And see, that's one really small but powerful thing. Be a worshipper. Be one who just delights in him. And specifically make sure you get into his presence. Not just his word, but you want his presence in a daily relationship with him. Make sure you do that. Because, you know, I feel there are challenges ahead to us. And I don't think we should be scared of that, but we need to be prepared. There's a difference. Don't be scared, but be prepared for the challenges ahead. Build your history with God. It allows you to be able to always take the next step. You know, we might not know the full path ahead, but as long as you know the next step, as long as you're able to take the next step with him, you'll always be all right. And the reason you'll always be all right is because you'll always be moving forwards. And as long as you're always moving forwards with God, you're always continuing to build his kingdom. And as importantly as that, you're also building your history. It's only when you're standing still and things can stagnate. Have the courage to always take the next step led by the Good Shepherd. Thank you very much. Bless you.